Hey, 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 friends. Welcome to Storytime with Shane. Those of you who haven't seen this costume before, uh, those of you who have, you know I am the Year of the Rat. So this is my rat costume to symbolize my Year of the Rat. So it's um, Shane Atui. Yeah, Shane Atui. That's the rat's name. See, I'm in here. Hi. So yeah, we'll just wait for a few more joiners before we get going. But yeah, what do you guys think of the rat costume? Mm hmm. You even got the tail. Dun 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 na na na. I got my tail. I am a rat. The year of the rat. Any guesses of how old I am? There's a few years of the rat. Um. The Star Wars, Star Wars was huge and just coming out um, when I was young. So if that gives you a clue of what years I was born. So yeah. So, the year of the rat. My rat costume. But, because I can't read with this on, I am going to slide the costume hat off. And I am going to slide into a trusty... Shane hat. I'll keep my rat belly. You can see my rat belly here. And I'm going to turn off my ringers. Because, um, yeah, I just uh, got a message there. See, it's even got little claws. But I can't, I can't read with the claws. But, yeah. So the rat costume, the claws. Doo -doo -doo. So I'll flip them back so I can hold my books. Um, I'll show you people who are just joining now. I... If you missed it, you can check it out afterwards. But at the beginning, I wore my rat head with my rat costume, my rat tail. So yeah, so we're live on Instagram and uh, Facebook right now. So what we normally do, no, I don't have a cold. Just uh, when I cough, my nose gets a little stuffy. So let me take a peek and see if there's, if there's any kids out there. Let me know. Put your names up here so I can say hi. Um, or even, it doesn't even, you don't have to be a kid. If you want me to say hi, throw your, your life in my forties, <laughs> throw, um, yes, I am 47. So that is my age. I was born in 1972, which happens to be the year of the rat. Um, so hence why I wore the rat costume today. Now let's see if there's any kid names on here. That I can say hi to so far. There's my sister. Hi Jody. Hi Jody. I'm the year of the rat. I don't know what year you are. What's your um year? Hey Erica, you got kids with you? Throw some kids' names up there if there's some kids with you, or your name, and I'll say I'll give you a shout out and say hello. Um, while you're doing that, uh, those of you who know, we start off with facts. So we'll start out with our fact, our trusty dusty fact for the day. My stormtrooper in the background here, he does not cooperate. It's like a typical stormtrooper, doesn't do what I want him to do. And he likes to attack me occasionally. So let's get on to our fact. We're going to go into an area of this book that we haven't been into yet. Um, because I want to, and I'm doing the reading, so ha ha ha. So what we do is we start out with a fact from the uh, Little Kid's first big book of Where, with Jill Esbaum being the, the author of this, and it's by the National Geographic Kids Collection. All right, so today we're going to go, we're going to do a little architecture. So the question we're going to start with today, and I'm going to turn this so you guys can see the book as well. Oh, you're a dragon? I didn't know you were... Oh, you're a dragon. That's pretty cool. My sister's in the year of the dragon. Hi, Tegan. Hi, Maya. Good to see you guys. Oh, Mia. Mia. Oh, hey, I like it. Mia, that's perfect. Got it. Mia. Hi, guys. Hi, Tegan. Hi, Mia. In the year of the dragon. That's too cool. How old are you? Same as me. Yeah, 47. 47, mm, girl. That's my age. I'll be 48 at the end of this year. So, the question we're going to is, where is the world's tallest building? I don't know why I chose this one. I just did. It intrigued me. I wanted to know. 
Um, so let's see. I'm having great difficulties with Instagram, the Instagram angle today. So bear with me, but I will show the book up close as well. So, tall buildings that reach high into the sky are called skyscrapers. Hmm, I wonder why. If any of you kids out know that out there can explain to me what skyscrapers and tall buildings have to do with each other, that'd be great. So the tallest is the, oh boy, I'm going to have a hard time with this the, these names, but I'm going to give it a try anyways. It is the Burr Khalifa in the United Arab Emirates, and it is twice, twice as tall as the Empire State Building in New York City. The Empire State Building is New York City's most famous landmark. When it opened in 1931, it was the tallest building in the world. So that was 1931, so that was a long time ago. Um, so there's a picture of the Empire State Building. Whoops. There it is there. I can honestly say I've never been there. I, there's not a lot of places that I want to visit in the States, but New York is is definitely on the list. Um, the the one in the United Emirates, the Burra Khalifa, is one of the fast has one of the fastest elevators in the world. And it only takes one minute to travel from the ground floor, so the first floor, to the observation deck on the hundred and twenty fourth floor. Wow. That's a long way up. So it takes one minute to go from 1 to 124. That's, that's really, I yeah, I'm just dumbfounded by that. So there is the tallest building in the world. In the United, um, how do you say that again? United Arab Emirates. And then over here is the first sky skyscraper was a home insurance building and it was built in 1885 so 1885 in Chicago Illinois that was the first skyscraper wait till you see how big it is um, it was just 10 stories so like I can count that on both my hands 10 stories high only um, so a 10 story building might not seem tall now but at the time, people were amazed that it didn't fall down. So people were absolutely amazed with the architecture. So there's the first skyscraper right there. And as you can see, the Emirates there, that was only 10 floors. But at the time in the day and age, that was a marvel. So that's kind of really cool. And then it leaves us with the question. And you guys can um, let me know however you want to let me know. What is the tallest building you have ever seen? The tallest building you have ever seen. I'm trying to think. What's the tallest building I've ever seen? I have seen the CN Tower in Toronto. I don't remember it that much. I don't know if I was in it. My sister might be able to answer that if I have or not. Not positive on that. Um... Yeah, maybe that's that might be it. I can't think of anywhere else that was that I've been that maybe was taller that I'm aware of. Like like I said, my family might be able to educate me a little better cuz most of our traveling was done when I was younger. Um so I don't remember a lot of it. <laughs> Unfortunately. So that was our fact for the day. So where's the tallest building and what's the tallest building you've seen? 84 is also a rat? Interesting. Cool, cool. Well, you're more than welcome to borrow my rat costume anytime you want. Did you guys see the rat head? Did everybody see the rat head? How about I put it on at the end so you can see it again? But yeah, that's my rat head. I think I have too many costumes. What do you guys think? Nah, you can never have too many costumes. Who am I kidding? All right, let's hop into the books. <clears throat> Gosh darn cough. It's not a cold. It's not a cold. All right. 
This is provided to me by the trusty folks over at the Okotoks Library. Again, I'm almost to the beginning of my cycle again, um, which is good and bad. Uh, I have no problems rereading them all. Um, but I may go see if I'm going to try and get a hold of my librarian friend at the Okotoks Library and see if I can get uh, some other books. Um, I hear they have curbside pickup, so it might be a thing I might be able to do. So we're going to hop right into it. No holes barred. We're going to go right into a, a great book. Everybody loves this book. I Am Jazz. No such thing as too many costumes. I agree. Yikes, you don't know? Okay, Jody. That is your mission, to find out where the tallest building that we visited as a family. Ha ha ha. Challenge on. I shouldn't do that. I, I wouldn't be able to figure it out, so... So we're going to hop right into the book, and it's I Am Jazz, provided to me by the Oak Tooks Library and my good librarian friend, um, uh, Lara. So let's have at her. I Am Jazz by Jessica Herthel and Jazz Jennings. Pictures by Shaylee McNichols. McNicholas. All right. So there we go. There's the picture at the front. Okay, try and get this in as best I can. I am Jazz. For as long as I can remember, my favorite color has been pink. My second favorite color is silver. And my third favorite color is green. All great colors. What are your favorite colors? My favorite colors are blue, silver, and red. Those are my favorite colors. Can you tell I like silver? Anyhow, I even have a silver necklace on, like silver rings. So yeah, and then there's the pretty dress over there. It's gorgeous. Very nice. Here are some of my other favorite things. Dancing, singing, backflips, drawing, soccer, swimming, makeup, and pretending I am Lady Gaga. I mean... A pop star. Yes, a pop star. Most of all, most of all, and who doesn't love this? I love mermaids. Sometimes I even wear a mermaid tail in the pool. Too cool. I didn't know that was a thing you could do. I guess as long as it doesn't pull you down, right? Like as long as it helps you swim. My best friends are Samantha and Casey. We always have fun together. We like high heels and princess gowns or cartwheels and trampolines. But I'm not exactly like Samantha or Casey and Casey. So here they are over there playing all the different things they like to play. Ooh, look at the boa. Yes, who doesn't love a good boa? And there we go. There's, here's Jazz over here. And there's Samantha and Casey. I have a girl brain, but a boy body. This is called transgender. I was born this way. See over here, drawing the pictures. And then over here. My, I'm still admiring that mermaid tail. Look at that thing. Oh. Oh, that's a doll. They, wow, lots of mermaid stuff. When I was very little, and my mom would say, You're such a good boy. I would say, No, Mama. Good girl. At first, my family was confused. They always thought of me as a boy. Such a good book. As I got a little older, I hardly ever played with trucks or tools or superheroes. Only princesses and mermaid costumes. My brothers told me this was girl stuff. I kept right on playing. My sister says I was talking to her about my girl thoughts and my girl dreams 
and how one day I would be a beautiful lady. She would giggle and say, you're a funny kid. Sometimes my parents would let me wear my sister's dresses around the house. But whenever we went out, I had to put on my boy clothes again. That made me mad, or this made me mad. This made me mad. Still, I never gave up on trying to convince them. Pretending I was a boy felt like I was telling a lie. Then, one amazing day, everything changed. Mom and Dad took me to meet a new doctor who asked me lots and lots of questions. Afterward, the doctor spoke to my parents, and I heard the word transgender for the very first time. That night at bedtime, my parents both hugged me and said, We understand now. Be who you are. We love you no matter what. That, that, bleh. This made me smile and smile and smile. Oh, such a good book. Mom and Dad told me I could start wearing girls' clothes to school and growing my hair long. They even let me change my name to jazz. Being jazz felt much more like being me. Mom said that being jazz would make me different from the other kids at school. Being that being different is okay. What's important, she said, is that I'm happy with who I am. True. You have to be absolutely happy with who you are authentically and find the people that support that and, and will help you flourish in those moments and times in our lives, right? And there's people out there that love all of us. Being jazz caused some other people to be confused too, like the teachers at school. At the beginning of the year, they wanted me to use the boys' bathroom and play on the boys' team in gym. But that didn't feel normal to me at all. Such a great book. I love this book. How many times have I said that? I think every page. I have so many good books. I love it. I was so happy when the teachers changed their minds. I can't imagine not playing on the same team as Casey and Samantha. Even today, there are kids who tease me or call me by my boy name or ignore me altogether. This makes me feel crummy. Then I remember that the kids who get to know me usually want to be my friend. They say I'm the, one of the nicest girls at school, right? You don't need to waste your time on people that don't appreciate you. I don't mind being different. Different is special. I think that what matters most is what the person is like on the inside. And inside... I'm happy, I'm having fun, and I am proud. I am jazz. All right. And on this last page here, um, yeah, I like to read these little last, if they're not too, too long, these last little notes. Um, so on this last page here, you can see 
jazz. Through the progression there, and then the mermaid tail, which looks so cool. And then there's a little snippet here, and I'll just read it to you guys. This is mostly for the parents, but just yeah, a little information. Trans Kids Purple Rainbow Foundation was created in 2007 with a commitment to enhancing the lives of children born with gender dysphoria. Uh, it is committed to the premise that gender dysphoria is something children can't control. And therefore, society needs to embrace them. Families need to support their children and allow them to grow up free of gender roles. It is dedicated to helping trans youth by sponsoring gatherings and specialty programs, providing scholarships to trans-friendly camps, donating money for research, helping homeless youth, and providing financial assistance to other trans youth organizations. Jazz is an honorary co-founder of Trans Kids Purple Rainbow Foundation and actively educate society by appearing in the media and speaking at schools, universities, medical schools, conferences, conventions, and symposiums. Changing the world by sharing your story one human at a time, right? Out and proud. I love that book. It just gives me goosebumps. All right, we're moseying on through this Disney book, which I think we are on, yep, we are on the story about Minnie and Mickey Mouse. How many people know Minnie and Mickey? I'm sure, hopefully everybody. So this one is a story about Minnie. So Minnie, the missing daffodils. Uh-oh, pretty flowers to go missing. One spring day, Daisy Duck went to her friend Minnie's house to help in the garden. But when the two got outside, they found a big surprise. My daffodils! Minnie shrieked. I don't have a very high voice, sorry. They're gone! I don't understand. They were here yesterday. That's terrible, Daisy said. It must be, the f must be a flower prowler. Flower prowler. Prowler. There we go. No flowers. But a sleeping cat. It's a pretty cat there. Ha <laughs> Minnie and Daisy searched the garden for clues. What's this? Daisy asked, and she pulled a few fuzzy white strands off a brush near the daffodil patch. Maybe the flower pro flower Wow, Prowler <laughs> left it, Minnie said. Maybe, Daisy said. Or it could be one of Figueroa's hair. Figueroa's hair, which is the cat's name. A moment later, Minnie's doorbell rang. Mickey Mouse was standing there on the porch with a big bunch of daffodils. Tied around them was a fluffy white ribbon. Oh, Mickey, Minnie cried. How could you? You cut down my daffodils. Uh-oh. Don't cut people's flowers without asking them. But I have a feeling there's more to this story. If I could turn the page. Mickey looked confused. What do you mean, Minnie? He asked. I thought these flowers... <coughs> I, <coughs> I bought these... At the flower shop because I know you love uh, daffodils. Really? Minnie said, putting the flowers in a vase. She was glad that Mickey wasn't the flower prowler. See, I keep wanting to say the flower prowler. It's tough. Could be just me, but I'm having a tough time with it. The flower prowler. Minnie, Daisy, and Mickey decided to look around town for the flower prowler. They headed back to the park and found Goofy. He was wearing a big daffodil on, oh, on his vest. On his vest. On his lapel. And he was playing with a yo-yo that had a fuzzy white string. Oh, Goofy. There's Mickey and them, and then there's Goofy and his yo-yo, and the daffodil on his vest. 
interesting. Hiya, Minnie, Goofy called. Do you like my flower? Mr. Power is having a sale on daffodils today. Hmm, said Minnie. That's quite a coincidence. Maybe we'd better check out the flower shop, Daisy said. The four friends went to Power Flowers and peeked through the window. That's Mr. Power, Mickey said. Minnie saw the shopkeeper had a sharp pair of scissors and a fuzzy white mustache. Mine's not white, but it's fuzzy. Kind of similar. You'll see when I show the picture closer. Um, and his shop was full of daffodils. He did it, she cried. I know it. <clears throat> There's the four of them talking. And then there is the flower shop owner. And I don't know if you can see his mustache, but it is quite similar to Shane's. Bit puffier, but same idea. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Maybe I'll have to dress up as Mr. Power someday. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have a costume for that. Don't don't hit me up with that one. Minnie and her friends burst into the shop. Where did you get the daffodils? Minnie asked. From the farm from a farmer named Miss Pote or Pody. I'm gonna say Pote. Mr. Power answered. She delivers daffodils here every day. But today she brought dozens of extras. Mr. Power pointed the way to Mrs. Pote's farm. You can't miss her, he said. She has fuzzy white hair. Oh, she kind of looks like him. Oh, they would make a cute couple. Mrs. Pote's farm was called Pote's, Pote's Goats. Man, they're making this hard on me. So Pote's Goats, so I got it right. Yes, I delivered extra daffodils today, Mrs. Pote told Minnie. My favorite goat, Flower, usually eats a lot of them as soon as they bloom. But she must not have been very hungry today. So there's the shopkeeper over there telling them where he's getting. And then over here is the infamous pout goat missus or Ms. or whatever. So interesting, interesting. That gave Minnie an idea. May I see a flower? she asked. Of course, dear, Mrs. Pote said. She led the friends to the pen, um, but there was no goat inside. Oh, my, Mrs. Pote said. She must have escaped. Wherever could she have gone? Look, there's a hole in the fence, Mickey said, pointing. Now what do we do, Daisy exclaimed. Not only are Minnie's daffodils gone, but now Mrs. Pote's goat. Hmm, said Minnie, deep in thought. Maybe these two mysteries are connected. Maybe. Minnie's got some ideas going on here, and I'm thinking she is on the right track. Interesting. Let's see. What do you mean, Mizzy, Minnie? Daisy asked. I have an idea of who the flower prowler might be, Minnie explained. It's someone who really likes daffodils. Someone who likes them even more than we do. Daisy held up fuzzy strands of hair. Don't forget this, she reminded Minnie. Isn't it still a clue? It sure is, Minnie agreed. And so is this, she pointed toward a trail of footprints. Follow me. So look, they're, they're getting on the trail. So she's like, oh, what's going on? And then Minnie spots these footprints over here. So now they're following the footprints. Uh-oh, where'd the footprints go? Whoop! Minnie and the others followed the footprints straight to Daisy's yard. There was Flower happily munching away on Daisy's flowers. See... Minnie said, I knew it. There's, there's our flower prowler. Now, if we could only train her to like weeds instead. Oh, oh, that's a good joke. I like that. That's funny. 
There we go. The end. Well, that was a good one, too. Yay, Mini, for solving that mystery. Which, my friends, brings us to the last book for the day, unfortunately. Um, I say unfortunately because it's coming to an end, but fortunately it is a great book. Another, They're all my favorites, but a really this one is top line. If you haven't heard this one, stick around. It's phenomenal. Um, my friends at the Oak Tokes Library, Library and Lara, set me up with this one, and it has fast become another one of my tops. So this one is called Maiden and Princess, words by Daniel Huck and Isabel Galupo, and art by Becca H Human. Yeah, Human, cool last name. So Maiden and Princess. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. I love this one. Once in a faraway kingdom, a strong, brave maiden is invited to the prince's ball, but she is not as excited to go as everyone else. After her mother convinces her to attend, she makes a huge impression on everyone present, from the villagers to the king and the queen, but she ends up finding true love in the most surprising place. All right. Starts with all these beautiful constellations. Who doesn't love the sky at night? Oh. Here we go. Let's get into it. The Maiden and the Princess. Once in a faraway kingdom, a call was made to all to find the son worthy of, to find their son a worthy bride. To find their son a worthy bride. The king and queen would host a ball. How fun. Love me a good ball. Such a good book. I'm going to have to go back and check um, see if I missed any names. So if I missed any kids names or if you want me to shout out put your name up there and I will when I scroll back after this. The ladies of the village were happy to be invited except for one young maiden who wasn't that excited. So here's all the villagers in their joy, laughing and yay. And then over here is this maiden who wasn't very excited. As you can see in the face, the facial expression says it all. This maiden was quite special the bravest in all the land. She knew the prince from battle. She knew the prince from battle, giving her the upper hand. See there, there's the prince and there's the maiden in battle together. So in theory, you would think that that would give her the upper hand, which is what she said, which is, it's a nice picture. We'll see, we'll see. See what happens there? The prince is smart and strong, she confided in her mother. But if I'm being honest, I see him as a brother. Her mother said, just go and have a bit of fun. The prince might not be right, but you could meet the one. There's mom over there. So the maiden put on the gown and headed to the ball. She marveled at all the people who filled the sparkling hall. I love this dragon. I want this dragon as a pet. I'm going to have an imaginary dragon pet. There they are. There's all the people at the ball. Isn't that amazing? It's very, very lavish. The villagers flocked over to the young maiden's side and insisted that she would make the best royal bride. You're magnificent. You're wise, brave, and true. There's no doubt in my mind that the prince will fall for you. Yeah, 
Interesting. Interesting. Even the king and queen approached her with a smile. You must come see our son and dance with him a while. The maiden was quite flustered, and so she said with care, Please pardon me, your majesties, but I must get some air. Very polite. That's a concerned face. She fled up to the balcony and looked out at the sky. A future with the prince made her want to cry. I don't mean to bother you, said a voice soft and kind, but you seem quite upset. May I ask what's on your mind? beautiful girl emerged who took the maiden's breath away. She sat down close to the maiden and asked if she could stay. Soon the maiden had forgotten about the prince and his throne. Summoning all of her courage, she took the girl's hands in her own. Then the doors burst open. The king and queen walked through. There's our precious daughter. We looked all over for you. The maiden's jaw fell open. Her head was feeling light. She had fallen for the princess on this wondrous starry night. Uh-oh. Trouble in the palace, maybe? The royal couple could feel the magic in the air. The queen said to the king, They're the perfect pair! Yay! There's some really, really, uh, smart, um, royalty. Love it. The maiden felt quite bashful, but quickly stole a glance. She saw the princess smiling and asked her, Want to dance? Oh, I love this story. I just, I just, I just can't, I can't, I love this story. Oh, so magical. They held each other close as they spun across the floor, and then they shared a kiss. Their hearts began to soar. Here they are over here, sharing a kiss at the ball. Wow. Soon the maiden and the princess were seldom seen apart. They filled their days together with books, laughter, and art. They rode horses and sang and picked wildflowers at dawn. They practiced their aim and faced adventure head on. Quite the team. Teamwork makes the dream work. I don't think I'll say that too much too, but I don't care. It's true. True story. When the day finally came to prove their love was true, the maiden and the princess happily said, I do. It appears the dragon has grown a bit, so 
they must have been fairly young, which is good. They waited, but they were always together and they shared so much. Oh, I love the dragon. The end. We're back to the constellations. Uh, anything to read on this one? No, we're good. Yeah, that brings us to the end of our books, my friends. The end of story time. Those of you who um, didn't get to see it in the beginning, I will throw the the uh, rat hat back on so you can see the costume in its entirety. Give me a second. Okay. So, here's the rat costume in its entirety. Who would have thought when I found this costume that it would come in this handy? I absolutely love this costume. It's scary and cool in all the same uh, respect. And see, look, let's just do this. Dun, 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 dun. Ow! And then this. And it even comes with the feet covers, but I don't have the feet covers on right now. But yeah, so there's my... There we go. Shayna Tui. Let's see who that is. Shayna Tui. Now I can't function with all this stuff on. Um, I mean, I can function. I just can't. <laughs> Cute! Yeah, this is my rat. And the Year of the Rat. I uh, found out there's another Year of the Rat in the, in the Facebook chat. And I also found out that my big sister is a Year of the Dragon, which... Totally, I'm jealous. Not that I don't love my rat, but yeah, I'm gonna have to wear when I wear my dragon costume. I'll have to wear it in honor for my sister's year of the dragon. So I will do that. So, as I said, that brings us to the end of story time. I want to thank you all for joining in. We do this Tuesday, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m. live on Facebook and Instagram. Um, there's a lot of you that show up uh, quite regularly. It's awesome. I love it. Anytime you want me to put a shout out, Terry Stevens. Hey, Terry. Those of you who don't know Mr. Terry Stevens, follow them on Facebook. And now you can follow them on Instagram. Welcome to the Instagram world. Love it. So, yeah, this is Storytime with Shane. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, and Sundays, 3 p.m. live on Instagram and Facebook. Later posted to um, my YouTube channel where you can see... Lots of drag performers. If you go follow, subscribe to my channel, you can see Terry performing on there. There's some of her. Um, lots of other people I do. I'm still, I'm constantly uploading. I have a lot of stuff. So the pandemic's working in that sense. Uh, so yeah, go check it out. Subscribe to that channel. It helps me out a lot. Hit the bell so you can be notified about all upcoming stuff. Um, I post a lot there now, and I'm trying to stay caught up, trying to keep it real. I've got an online pride coming up on May 4th at 3 p.m. Um, with some local performers in that as well. And that will be broadcast. It's a World Pride, so it'll be broadcast uh, all over the world. So, yeah, tune into that. You can see the information in, in my so my uh, social media uh, posts. And other than that, we're going to end story time, and we'll see you back for story time on Tuesday and who knows maybe we'll see you guys in the cyber world before then for now just want to say peace out love y'all thanks for tuning in if you'd like to make a donation you know what to do um there's lots of ways to do it share 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 tell people about it get get kids out here let me know did i miss anybody's i like my silver hat thank you i like my silver hat too did i miss anybody's names you could listen, listen to my reading voice forever. Oh my god, that is so nice. I like that. Thank you. Did I miss any kids on here? Did you ever find the books that take a little big book and leave the book things? What? I, need, I don't understand that, Isabel, about the find good books in the little take. Oh! The libraries. 
those li I have never stopped actually and I have quite a few of them in Okotoks so I should check it out those little libraries that you walk by I will look and see what I can see love this book yes the maiden princess fabulous I can listen to you reading forever do, 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 do. love it love your silver hat very cool Shane looking forward to world pride uh, da, da, da. anybody on this any kids over here that I missed probably the bow building downtown cool that's actually a pretty cool building. Um, but yeah, Calgary Tower was before that. So that is excellent. I think I got everybody. If I missed you, I'm sorry. See you on Tuesday for another story time with Shane. Uh, keep safe. Try not to speak moistly. Wear masks. Wash your hands. Um, and don't panic. We're in this together. We got each other today. We'll make it through.